Actually, how are you was one of the worst questions I could get at that time because it seems like it's such a pleasantry, right? And we, we mean it genuinely, but not everybody's prepared <laughs> for, for a 32-year-old woman to say, actually, I just had a miscarriage yesterday. So when I was seven weeks pregnant, I got a phone call from the doctor's office saying that they had referred me for an eight week scan, which is basically called a dating and viability scan, which as a person who's just gotten pregnant, that's kind of a triggering way of wording it because it's already questioning whether your baby is real or not, right? And she kind of like was running the wand around on my belly and, and there was just this black hole and I had this feeling right away. It was like, there's nothing there. There was nothing. <laughs> I had a friend who had had a similar experience and that was the only time I'd ever heard of what we then found out was a blighted ovum, right? It's just a pregnancy that just doesn't develop. It's there, but it's kind of missed when I was about approximately between nine and 10 weeks. And I just knew like I could just feel, I, at that point it was like cramping and I was like, it's done. You start to think back upon the past eight weeks and yeah. longer about what was I doing and what was I having to eat and did, I, did that have something in it and oh, I, I might've had a bite of sushi or the process of it all is so complex and so wonderful, but it's hard to, to accept that that's, no, that you didn't, that it was nothing that you did, right? It was yeah. just that that's how it, that's how it unfolds. I mean, amidst the devastation of that, there's, there was a reassurance that I wasn't at fault. Um, and of course that feeling of like, I can't change this. I want this to be a certain way, but I, I can't make it any different than it is. We had the pregnancy app that outlines how big your baby is at different stages. And, and I think one of the very first ones was, uh, your baby is the size of a speck. So for a little while we were we were talking about the baby as the speck, yeah. um, and that's sort of how we collectively refer to that baby as is yeah. the speck. The speck. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then of course, then we find out that the actual what was in there was just a gestational sac. I did refer to it as Zach the sack at one point because I needed to keep my sense of humor in check. Life is full of so many ups and downs, and we're all going through it together. And I think if we if we try and keep it inside, it's just it's so much harder. Mm -hmm. So even just as we were going through it and somebody asking, how are you today? Or how are things going? And you being able to share that, you're right. It does open up so much more conversation about these things and about um, other people's experiences. And those things together all help us connect with, it, with each other more. And I think that can only result in us all being stronger to go through those experiences together. Yeah, we got to the point where we were like, okay, let's try again, see what happens. Um, but I got pregnant pretty quickly. And um, that second time was like, okay, let's, let's do this. We're doing this again. The thing I've learned through this experience is that loss affects every pregnancy you have. Like anxiety in both pregnancies in the first trimester was totally apparent because that's when I lost the first one. I do remember specifically that first moment we heard the heartbeat for the first time and both of us just dissolved. Now our daughter B is two and a half and running around and jumping around and yelling and screaming. And <laughs> it's always interesting taking that step back and looking at, yeah, the, our first experience being pregnant and, and what that was like. And then fast forwarding to now where we have a little one and then another little one on the way too. We have absolutely the child we were meant to have because of that loss. I do think about this spec. Um, and I guess I think less about what this, who the spec might have been, but I think about what the spec did for us. In many ways, it was a moment that that connected us so strongly and connected us as a family and as a couple so strongly. The spec gave us that sense of the power to move forward and the power to move on and, and to embrace what being a family is, that family is loss and family is support. <clears throat>
and family is love in all those ways. And just being able to to sit with you and and be and and sit together reading bedtime stories and and think about what we mean to each other and the spec is part of that. The spec is lost that we were all part of and that that keeps us connected as a family. That a family is all parts of everyone together. The messy, the strong, the complicated, but the beautiful all in its own way.